Hey, everybody, it's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and uh, my, my good friend, Michelle Bauman, the director of Why for Life. She's she's back. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. It's almost Christmas time, right? So as, all as we Christmas record time. this, yeah, it's it's uh, <laughs> looming all of the schedule and and uh, all of the joy. And, and um, so obviously, we should talk about the fall. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually does, we should, we, sh- we should, because, you know, the promise that's conveyed in Genesis 3 is answered uh, at Christmas, right? Mm-hmm. So, right. yeah. So let's do it. Let's talk about Genesis 3. Right. So if if you're new to this series, I would really recommend hop back in and uh, catch the last few with Michelle. We've been sort of looking through the book of Genesis for for life issues, um, and and it's been a ride. Um, I think everybody sort of on on shorthand knows Genesis three if you sort of grew up in Christian circles. But if if you're unfamiliar, uh, give me give me kind of the high notes here or the low notes, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So Genesis three is the fall, right? Everything is perfect in the Garden of Eden. Everything is perfect in the world itself. And then we know the imperfection happens because of the fall, right? So, so uh, we start off with, with Satan in the form of a snake, a serpent who comes and tempts Eve. And, um, he causes her to question. He says, did God really say you should not eat of any tree in the garden? And of course it's not even, he twists God's word, right? God said you could eat of any tree except for this one. Um, but Satan twists it and he creates doubt and then doubt, you know, eventually leads to a rejection of, of what God has established. And that's what happens. Um, Eve starts to kind of question and then she adds to what God said, right? She said, yeah, oh yeah, he said that and neither shall you touch it. Right. Um, but, but this fruit, this fruit, um, Satan promises will give her the knowledge of good and evil, will give her the ability to be like God, to know like God. Um, and of course, that is a temptation that uh, she can't she can't walk away from. Right. Right. And and it is is it is the root of all temptations, really. right? Um, the temptation to be God's in and of ourselves. Um, and so Eve Eve takes that fruit whatever that fruit is, and she eats of it. Uh, she, she tastes death. She swallows death instead of eating from the tree of life and eating mm-hmm. from the good things that God has to offer uh, in an attempt to be her, to know, to be like God. Um, and the truth is God does know good and evil, but it's not because he's taken part of e- evil. It's because he knows the difference because he knows what is good and he is good and he knows what is not him right and unfortunately eve in the only way she's going to know good and evil is she has to experience it yeah. right she has to experience evil you you said something just really profound and it got me think that that eve chose to eat of death rather than to continue to eat with life and and it's it's hard not to jump to suicide. Um, it's, it's hard not to sort of connect those dots that Eve's whole situation was, she would be dependent on God for every good thing. Um, and that's a scary place to be when, when trust is broken. Um, and not because God has done anything wrong, not because he has ever deserved to, to sort of have us mistrust him, but because we want things that, that are not good for us because we want things that he just knows better than to give us. But it is so scary sometimes to, to recognize that Christianity doesn't just sort of take away all your problems. So you don't need God anymore. Like that, that's what Eve wanted to, to not need God anymore. Christianity is to, to daily need God for everything. And if you are afraid that he might not provide or even just provide in a way that just means you have to continue to, to live the life you're living. There are people who, who this day chase that, that same sin and would rather eat of death than life. So, so how do we sort of address that with, with a, a life coming forward? Yeah. Yeah, well, we know that not just Eve eats of it, but also Adam. And we know that the result of that is brokenness, brokenness um, relationally between the two of them, brokenness with God. We see shame, we see fear, we see blame. All of those things come out in um, that in Ch- Genesis 3. So so how is it addressed? Well, immediately, right? Immediately, God, God gets to the root of it. Um, he asks the questions. Right, he's looking for repentance, and what he sees is is blame and those sorts of things. Um, 
but then what he does is he promises a savior, right? Mm -hmm. So, so he, he gives life where life has been broken. He gives life where people have chosen death. He walks into the midst of them in the garden. He curses, curses the serpent and he promises in Genesis 3.15, the savior, right? The person, the one who will, who will bruise uh, Satan's head, who will crush him. Um, and, and already right there, God gives hope. Um, and so we see this, you know, even in, in life issues, God is life. In essence, he is life. And so he can do no other than to give life, right? To uphold life. And so he upholds life. He has this, this plan that he had set from the, from the beginning of time. Um, he had created order for, for Adam and Eve, but he still upholds that order, right? That order doesn't change. That order is good. Um, he, he tells them this order will be harder now, right? So uh, Eve, who is to bear life, uh, she'll have some pain in that life bearing um, throughout the process, not just in giving birth. And that, that order that was designed to protect her, um, she will rebel against it, right? She doesn't want to be under her husband's rule. Um, under, and, and so God, God mentions this. And, you know, Adam, who is supposed to be the protector and the provider, will now have to sweat by the sweat of his brow. He will bring forth things of the earth. And yet, um, even in that, he promises a savior, right? God tells Adam, you will die, right? To dust, dust you will return. It's the first time God pronounces um, death. And yet, again, he follows it up with life. He provides for their, their life right there. He clothes them. And I think it's really interesting, um, you know, and he has to clothe them because, again, because of the brokenness, they have the shame. They understand their nakedness. But he clothes them in the skins of animals. And this, like, you know, I used to think, oh, that's, you know, great, you know, warm clothes. And yet death, death happened. Yeah. So that they Sacrifice would be happened. Yeah. 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 And, and in some ways they were clothed in death, really. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, those are the skins of animals. So that as they wear those skins, they're reminded of the mortality and they're clothed, clothed in death. And, and I just, as I was rereading it this morning, thought, you know what? We too are clothed. We have been given clothes that required death, right? Yeah. We were given clothes in our baptism from the death of the one that God predicted in, in Genesis 3.15. Those clothes are now on us, right? They protect us that we, we gained in our baptism and they give us life, right? Those clothes give us um, faith and, and the promise of heaven and life eternal. And so God doesn't quit providing. He continues to provide life uh, even when, even in the midst of death and even sometimes obviously in, in the greatest way through death, through the promised seed that God promised, that life that he promised for generations and generations and generations uh, for us. Um, and so we see, we see him uphold, uphold life again and again, um, despite this fall. That's fantastic too, because there's this. Uh, there's no going back to Eden. Like there, there is no going back this side of the resurrection to a place without any kind of pain or, or or suffering or lack or want, where we can just sort of walk around naked. There, there place without shame. Um, it is really at, at, at the root of it. That, but God is providing life this side of Eden. Um, it is a wonderful gift because now you get to actually acknowledge that things are things are broken down here. Sin is broken. It sin breaks stuff. It it does real damage, and you can see it um, not just in the sacrifice that Christ bore upon the cross, but even just in the struggles that we have the wants, the sufferings, the shame that that bottles things up and, and sends it pouring out sideways in all sorts of awful ways. But but you can actually find God at work even outside of the garden to, to care for, to nurture, to comfort, to sustain. He, he does it through vocation. He does it through word. He does it through sacrament. There are places where God would make it so clear that it hurts down here, but we're not abandoned to it, right? Right, right. Yeah. And, and, and we do see that in life issues today, right? We see that life issues come about... Um, in, in many and various ways, sometimes from the choices that we make uh, and sometimes just because of the brokenness, right? So when we think about the choices, we, we the results of choices we make, very often we can think of life issues like 
abortion or physician assisted suicide where we're we're deciding um, what is good right the same the same temptation that Eve had what is good is it better to end suffering is it better to um, to fix what we see as a problem right um, but then there are also those life issues that we face that weren't a result of our choices very likely but a result of the brokenness that was established in Genesis 3.15. Things like infertility, like a negative prenatal diagnosis, like a disability or a mental illness or just a physical illness. Um, these things aren't necessarily tied to the choices or the decisions we make, but they are tied to our brokenness, right? right. But, but even in that, we have hope. And I think when we look at Adam, you know, all this pronouncement happens, right? And he's clothed in these new clothes that he shouldn't have needed, right? That he's clothed in death. And yet the first thing we see him do is rename Eve, right? Before he gave her the name of woman, right? Part of me, out of man. Um, but instead he gives her the name of Eve, which means like the mother of all life. And he knows, he knows Eve is, Eve will give life and bring forth that promised life that God has. So even then, Adam, Adam has hope and Eve has hope. And we too have hope because of, of the clothes God has given us and because of the promises God has given us. Absolutely. I, I can't think of a better place to end um, than, than on hope like that. So uh, Michelle, thanks so much uh, for, for hopping back on. Yeah, thanks for the invitation. And uh, if you're, you know, seeing this before Christmas, Merry Christmas. Absolutely.